Previously, we picked up our camper in Florida and built the bed frame and galley. Yeah. All right, guys, I've been working on the camper project for a few days now. It's time to do electrical. I've got some supplies in here, including 14 gauge wire, 18 gauge wire, wire butt splice connectors, ring crimp connectors, some heat shrink. So I'm gonna run everything through this fuse box and then I'm gonna connect it, the fuse box to the DC power or I'll be able to connect it right into the 110. So let me back up for a moment. Runaway campers makes it very easy to meet your power needs if you're at a campsite with power available. There's a power outlet on the exterior of the camper on the driver's side that powers two power strips within the camper. This will allow you to use all of your favorite electronic devices including an air conditioner, charger phone, and more. For those who have not put a lot of thought into electrical systems, this is the same power that we find inside of a home. We might call it 120 volt system or AC system for alternating current. However, there may be times that we don't have a power supply to plug into. And in those instances, we often use a battery system for our power. These battery power systems are known as 12 volt systems or DC for direct current. And it's what you might find in a car, boat, or RV. Think cigarette lighter or USB port or other low voltage applications. In a robust electrical system within an RV, you would find the capability to power things with both the 120 volt system and the 12 volt system. If you look at the build out of a DIY camper electrical system, you're gonna have batteries, inverters, solar panels, solar charge controllers, displays, monitors, and more. My solution to keep this simple for me is to use a power supply that has all of these components already built in to a small, neat, user-friendly box. So that leaves a relatively simple task for me to run wires from my lights and other devices to the power supply. I've got lights for under the bed for kids, including remote control and different colors. I've got strip lights to go above and below cabinets. I've got switches to turn lights on and off. Okay, so I had considered putting an external light next to the door and I just read a post online where people are saying that those lights tend to attract a lot of insects so I'm considering moving it back here. Ultimately I got a great recommendation from my friend to buy these solar lights. You don't need to wire them. You can stick them on the outside of the camper with command strips and you have the option to turn them on or off or put them on a motion sensor. Alright guys so I'm going to put this white LED light up on the quarter inch trim that I put here the other day. This way the light will be shining up and I don't have to look directly at the bulbs, but I still get the benefit of the light. I have these white LED strip lights. I'm going through and connecting them. I'll just strip off the very end. I'll put the heat shrink on here and then I'll use these crimp connectors. And then we'll shrink that down. And I'll set up all of the wiring to come right here. The lighting, the fan, and the refrigerator. So I'm putting up strip lighting down in the bottom bunk. This lighting is actually color lighting. So the kids can enjoy that and change the color. And I think what I'm gonna do is just wrap it around here. A set of switches here so I can turn the power on and off right by the door to the lighting and the other devices. So then I'll run the wire up to the top and then hopefully I'll join this over here, back down and across. grinding late night to get the electric done. Things would look messy before they became tidy again. All right guys, we're starting to wrap up some of these electrical projects, but there is one more appliance that needs to be added and that's the Max Air fan. So I'm gonna go up top and take a look. You guys can see that I have the roof rack system installed. I have the awning on it. 
And I want to be thoughtful about if I were to put a bicycle or a kayak on the roof, could they stay clear of the fan? So I want to think a little bit about where I'd like this fan to go. And if I look at the ceiling, I think anywhere up in this area would be fine. Maybe just shy of the shelf. So just to give an idea, the hole might be something like this. And then we'd want to clean the roof here to get a good seal. So it is a little bit nerve wracking for sure to cut a hole in the roof of your new camper, but here we have it. Let's go ahead and clean it off real good up top and then we'll prepare it for the butyl tape. Let me just make sure everything fits the way I'm expecting. Oh yeah, fits like a glove. Let's trim some of this excess butyl tape. We'll seal the flange and then screw. So let's use this self-leveling sealant. Next step is to attach the wiring and confirm that we got power. So I'm just plugging in the Max Air fan temporarily to make sure that we have power. Yes, everything's working. Now we gotta move to our next step. Let me hit off. Okay, so here is the piece that I cut out of the roof of the runaway camper. You can see the honeycomb fiberglass composite that makes up the runaway in the 2021 models and future. Yep. All right, so this is the Bluetti EV55. It is a 700 watt power supply. Quick guide, warning, keep out of direct sunlight, good to know. Cables. Wow, so it's actually quite small. I like that. Okay, so let me pause here for another moment. There are a number of competing products out on the market, including a line of batteries from the company called Jackery. There's a similar company called Yeti Goal Zero and another company called EcoFlow. Many of these batteries are based on lithium technology. And I like this product from Bluetti because it utilizes a different battery chemistry. This is based on lithium iron phosphate, which have longer life cycles and are considered more stable. The DC output includes four USB chargers as well as a USB-C charger. This unit has four 110 volt AC outputs with a built-in inverter. The unit can be charged by plugging it into a wall or through a car charging adapter or through solar. This unit is not without criticisms. Detractors claim that they can't stand the display and it is heavier than similarly sized units from competitors. You can see the light on the back. Okay, now it says it's charging. And the output is 12 watts of output. 
So I went through and did some testing of the charging from the DC and the AC outlets and I was making note of the different levels of wattage. Here I even plugged in a ceramic heater which is meant to have a 400 watt draw just to see if it could run. It was pretty cool that this thing actually ran, although it would probably take up all the power in this power station in less than two hours. Ultimately, this power station and everything else I've built in this camper really need to be used for an entire season or maybe two before I can give a final review as to whether or not they performed up to expectations. While it can take up to 200 watts of solar, I wasn't ready to make a commitment on an expensive solar solution. I did want some solar power. This is just 100 watts. This is not what you would consider a portable solar panel. Okay, but it is flexible, okay? It could be mounted to a roof, for example. It's super lightweight. You can easily bring that outside and set it up in the sun while you keep your power in the shade or keep your camper in the shade. Um, you can see that it comes with uh, your standard MC4 ports. So I've also spent some time testing the solar panel in cloudy and partly cloudy days. I think so far the most wattage I've seen is about 80 watts. Right guys, we're pretty much wrapping up the build on this camper. Let's take a look and see what we've got. Twelve volt refrigerator. This refrigerator also can run on a 110. Of course, we have the Max Air fan that we installed, which has I think 10 different speeds. You can pull air in or push air out, and it has a cover so it can run even in the rain. If you're interested in buying a Max Air fan, stick around to the end. I have a special message I want to share with you. Air conditioner comes standard, but we're only going to be able to run that when we're on shore power. I mean, potentially we could run it for a few hours on the Blue Eddy, but we would really take down the power in the power station by doing so. So it's likely we'll just seek out either conditions where we don't need an air conditioner and we could use this fan or a place where we have shore power and we can run this. And then all of the power with a switch in front and then a fuse box back behind. Everything from that panel and fuse box goes through this cord. These lights on either side. We also have an up light here on the shelf and a down light so we can work at this counter space. We have USB, 12 volt connector, USB ports up here and down in the lower bunk. But down below we have bunk for the children. It includes some fun lights and a USB port so that they can keep their iPad charged and watch movies at them. Thanks for checking out the build. Come back for next episode when we do our final camper tour. If you are a runaway enthusiast, you already know the channel Hanging with Herky, where Ed and Nancy share their adventures in their runaway camper. They've been good enough to offer some sage advice to me and just today told me about a known issue with the Max Air fan where the motherboard can actually be compromised from condensation. There's an excellent solution for this, a little preventative application of a thin silicone coat and it's outlined on this channel here. I'll put a link down in the description. Music